Let's try this problem. I hope you started by drawing your positive axes, as we always do. Now I have to draw a right triangle indicating the components and overall vector. I could start by drawing the x component, or if I feel like it, I can start by drawing the y component. I feel like drawing the y component first, so I'll draw the y component first here. Now I have to draw the x component. Uh, by the way, uh, why is this pointing down? Because up is positive and the y component is negative. Since up is positive and the y component is negative, it should be pointing down. Now we need the x component. Now, uh, which direction should the x component be pointing in? Well, it's pointing in the positive direction, which is to the left. So the x component is to the left. Left is positive, the x component is positive, so the x component is left. And the x component should begin where the y component left off. This component begins where the initial component left off. And now we can draw the overall vector. Our components began at this initial point and ended up at this final point. So the overall vector should also begin at this initial point and end at this final point. So make sure you put the arrowhead in the right place. The arrowhead goes here, not here. The overall vector should be pointing towards the final point. It shouldn't be pointing towards the initial point. Remember to always be careful about your directions. Uh, this x component is to the left because left is positive and the x component is positive. That's just as important as any other part of the problem. Make sure you start by writing down your positive directions and then use those carefully. Here's the information we were originally given. Here's what we're being asked for. We're also being asked implicitly for the direction. The overall vector includes a direction. Well, a good way to indicate that is to figure out this angle at the tail of the overall vector. We probably don't want to find the angle at the head. We want to find the angle at the tail of the overall vector. I'll put a question mark there, and let's give that a name, theta. And I'll put an asterisk in over here to show that this is the angle we're focusing on. Since we know two sides, we can find the third side using the Pythagorean theorem. The symbol we're using for the hypotenuse is V. One leg has a length of 7, and the other leg has a length of 7. These are all lengths, so we're not plugging in sides. 7 squared plus 7 squared is 98. To get the v by itself, we do the opposite and take the square root of both sides. If you square something and then take the square root, you're left with the original variable. And the square root of 98 on your calculator is 9.9. .9. That's part of the answer. That's the magnitude of the overall vector. Now we have to find theta. It actually should be obvious to you what theta is. It should be obvious to you what theta is without doing any math. Um, but even if it was obvious to you what theta was, I hope you did the math anyway just for the practice. It's great if you saw what theta was just from common sense. But you should still work through the math just so that you're improving on the technical aspect as well. So let's work through the technical way of working this out. Well, we're going to try to use the signs we were originally given, marked with the asterisks. We were given the opposite and adjacent sides that brings us to tangent, toe. The length of the opposite side was 7, and the length of the adjacent side was also 7. As usual, we don't plug in signs when we're working with trig functions. Trig functions are working with geometry and lengths, which is a matter of magnitudes. We might as well do this division. Obviously, 7 divided by 7 is 1. Now, to get theta by itself, we have to remove the tangent function by using the inverse tangent. It 
And if we're going to take the inverse tangent of the left, we must take the inverse tangent of the right. That's the way algebra works. If you start with theta and take the tangent, and then take the inverse tangent, you go back to where you started, which was theta. And we can use our calculator to find the inverse tangent of 1, which is 45 degrees. So this angle is 45 degrees. I was saying before that it should have been obvious to you what theta was without doing the math. Why should it be obvious? Well, these two sides are equal in length. When the sides are equal, the angles also have to be equal. That's the way isosceles triangles work. If the sides are equal, the angles have to be equal. Well, the only way these two angles can be equal is if they're both 45, because they have to add up to 90. So anytime you have an isosceles right triangle, you know that this angle has to be 45 and the other angle is 45. But it's good to confirm that using our technical mathematical approach. You can see that in these videos, I almost always write the general formula first and only then plug in. I write the general formula first and only then plug in. Well, remember that what I'm doing on the board is the notation that I'd recommend you use as well. Um, now, once you get more comfortable with these problems, you don't need to keep writing the general formula first. Once you're feeling very comfortable, you can start going straight to the specific equations. So if you feel like you're ready to skip the general formula and go straight to the specific equations, that's fine. Feel free to skip these general formulas and go to the specific equations. But you should only feel free to do that if it doesn't lead you to make mistakes. If you find that you're ending up making careless mistakes, go back to writing down the general formula. It only takes a couple seconds more to write down the general formula, and I think that it helps students a lot to avoid careless mistakes. Writing down the general formula first really helps students to avoid careless mistakes. So don't skip over the general formula unless you know that you don't have a tendency to care make careless mistakes. If you have a tendency to make careless mistakes, keep writing the general formula first and only then plugging in. Remember that when I drew this triangle, I chose to draw the y component first and then the x component. But if I had wanted to, I could have drawn the x component first. I could have drawn the x component first, and then I could have drawn the y component. That would have given me, um, again, the same overall vector as before. The same overall vector as before, but a different right triangle. Now it would have been natural to focus on this angle not this angle, uh, but you can see that we would have found that this angle was also 45 degrees. In this case, it doesn't really matter which angle you focus on and which triangle you draw. Both of them are going to have 45 degree angles. By the way, remember, how can we describe these angles in words? Well, we could say that this is a vector that has a magnitude of 9.9, .9, and it's forming an angle of 45 degrees to the left of the negative y-axis. 45 degrees to the left of the negative y-axis. You can see this is pointing in the direction of the negative y-axis, and the angle is to its left. 45 degrees to the left of the negative y-axis. Or if you want to focus on this angle, you can say that we're, uh, we have a magnitude of 9.9, .9 and that the vector is pointing at an angle of 45 degrees uh, below the positive x-axis. Focusing on this angle, we have a uh, direction of 45 degrees below the positive x-axis, because this is the positive x-direction, right? The specter is pointing in the positive x-direction, and clearly we're below that. 45 degrees below the positive x-axis. Remember to keep working with the, uh, the positive directions that you were given. And again, if you're uncomfortable with all that verbiage, you can just draw a picture and label the angle that you're focusing on. Then you don't need to describe it so carefully with words.